Hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Michael Jenks, and welcome once again to the Sunday Sermon Series. We're here once again with the word for your heart and for your soul. We pray that all is well with you on this Lord's Day, and we pray that the Lord uh, has been blessing you, and we pray that you'll be able to stay with us for a little while this morning as we once again open up the Word of God. As always, streaming right now over Facebook and YouTube, Periscope, and Twitter. Uh, once again, we pray that if you are watching over Facebook, uh, that you will take the time out. Uh, to share this page and others uh, also may be blessed as always. We want to make sure uh, that as many people as possible are able to hear this life-changing uh, word of the Lord. Amen. You can also go to our website, uh, which is that's the word.org. And by going there, you'll be able to be in contact with all of our podcasts that we have produced and continue to produce. Uh, you can also find our podcasts uh, on our YouTube channel, which is that's the word ministries. Just go to Pastor Michael Jakes and it'll bring you right there. And you can also go uh, to our podcast platform, which is Spreaker.com. You can listen in there and you'll find all of our podcasts that we have produced. Amen. We're also available on several other podcasts, including iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podcast Addict, uh, and CastBox, and many others. Amen. And so once again, we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you uh, as you continue uh, to do his work. Today we come to the end of our series, uh, our series that we have uh, that we have been in for the past uh, several weeks entitled simply Stand, uh, Life Lessons from God's Warriors. And today we will talk about the final four. Uh, yes, the final four. We're going to talk about four different individuals, but they all worked as a team. Uh, but we're going to talk about them uh, this morning. It's very important uh, in any discussion about warriors, uh, you cannot leave these individuals out. So once again, we pray that you'll be able to stay with us uh, this morning as we open up uh, the word of God. We're going to pray. So Lord, we bless your name right now. We thank you once again for giving us another opportunity uh, to share your word. Lord, we pray for the next few minutes, Lord, that you might be here with us. Lord, we pray that you might anoint. Uh, Lord, you might that you might bring clarity of mind and spirit. Uh, Lord, you might draw those who need to hear this word this morning uh, to this place on the World Wide Web. Lord, have your way. Bless us together right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, hallelujah. We are going to come to you from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Very, very familiar story from the book of Daniel. And we'll start in Daniel, uh, we'll start in Daniel chapter uh, number one. Uh, we won't stay there, uh, but we'll start in Daniel chapter number one uh, just to uh, set the tone uh, about our word this morning. Daniel chapter number one, and we're going to start in verse uh, number, uh, let's start in verse number three. Let's start at verse number three. Daniel chapter one, starting in verse number three, it says, And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding, science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now, these specific, these specific uh, 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 traits that they wanted from these individuals, they wanted to use them because they wanted to change these individuals for their purposes. They wanted people that were skilled in all these areas, but they wanted them to also be at the same time pliable, pliable in their hands. Because as we'll find out, uh, these these men. Daniel and his three friends here, they had been taken. We didn't read that from the beginning, but they had been taken from their homeland and they were now prisoners, basically living in a foreign land, which was Babylon. And so they wanted to take these individuals and change them to who they wanted them to be. Uh, verse number five, and the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine uh, which he drank. So nourishing them three years that at the end thereof, they might stand before the king. Now among these, among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel 
the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and, uh, and, uh, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. So you notice how the Babylonian people, they immediately, at this time, they began to try and change who they were. Babylon is, when we talk about Babylon, we're talking about the world and the world's ways. Uh, Babylon, this world is for the Christian. For the Christian, this world is trying to change who you are. Just as they tried to change these, these men of Judah, these young men of Judah, the world is trying to change us. The world is trying to change the Christian to believe and to go for that which it believes. We've said it over and over again that this world system is a corrupt system. The world system, this world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is all of the world. It is not from the Father, but the enemy would have us to conform to this world but scripture says very plainly that we are not to be we are not to be conformed to this world but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds these young men had been renewed these young men had been transformed they knew who they were and this was not going to be an easy thing for the babylonians to change them it would not be possible as we will find out it goes on in verse number 8 and we'll stop here and move on to another chapter but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And we're not going to take you further into this, this story. Uh, what Daniel did set the tone for their entire stay in Babylon. It set the tone for his life in Babylon. It set the tone for himself and his three friends in Babylon for the rest of their lives, that Daniel would not defile himself with the king's meat. He purposed in his heart, listen, before you decide that you are going to stand up and be different, before you uh, decide that you are going to defy, before you uh, decide that you are going to resist the powers that be, you must already make up your mind ahead of time and not even make up your mind, make up your heart. He purposed in his heart. This is a heart thing. This is not just a mind thing. This is a heart thing. He purposed within himself that he would not defile himself because he knew who he was. He knew exactly who he was. And we see the story of uh, of what Daniel did here, it ends in success for himself and his three friends. But then we see several years later, with Daniel not in this particular end of the story, but we know his influence is deeply embedded uh, in what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do. Now, this morning we want to talk about resisting and rejoicing. Re resisting and rejoicing. Once again, before you decide that you're going to resist, you must make up your mind ahead of time. It is not something uh, that you should, it is not something that you should think that it's just going to happen immediately that when the time comes that you have to resist, that you're just going to do it. You have to already, you have to purpose in your heart beforehand that you are going to be different, that you are going to stand. And sometimes you are going to have to stand alone, alone. Are you willing to stand alone? That is the question. Standing alone. Here's what it says. Let's go to Daniel chapter number three. Daniel chapter number three. And let's go down. Let's go right. Let's go right to the meat. Daniel chapter number three. And let's start uh, in verse number 10. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man uh, that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the sharp, uh, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. You may know the story. Nebuchadnezzar had set up a, an image, an image several feet high uh, that he wanted everyone to bow down to. This image was of himself. And he wanted everybody, when they heard the sound of the music, to bow down to this image of himself. He was placing himself as God. When you hear the music, get down on your knees and give homage to it. Amen. That is what he wanted. But now in verse number 11, he said, it, it says, it goes on, whoso falleth not down and worships 
uh, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And so there are the choices. You bow down or you go into the furnace. You do what the world says or you will suffer the consequences. You do what we say or you will see what will happen to you. That was the threat. That was the promise. This is what would happen. And now we have verse number 12. There are certain Jews. There are certain ones. This, I want to be that certain one. Do you want to be that certain one? I want to be that certain one uh, that defies. Okay, I want to be that one that resists. I don't want to, I don't want to be like everyone else. I don't want to, I don't want to uh, comply with the status quo. I don't want to side with the majority at all times. No, no, no. That is, it's a lonely life. It's a lonely life uh, standing up against uh, the status quo. It, it's a lonely life challenging the majority. It, it, it's a lonely life and it can be a dangerous life, but most times that is the life of the child of God. We stand alone many times because of what we believe. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Stop right there. These men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had been, from the time that we read in verse number one, they had now been set over the affairs, some of the affairs of Babylon. So God had shown them favor. Even in their foreign land that they were in, they had been set up above many others. Okay? Favor followed them where they went because they were doing the right thing, because they knew who they were and they would not allow Babylon, aka the world, change who they were. They did not bow down. It says here that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, three things that they did not do and that tell us what we should not do. These three things as we live in the world. God bless you, Cindy. God bless you so much. Three things that we should not do as we live here uh, in this world. It says here that they did not, they did not regard thee. In other words, they paid no attention, no attention to this decree. They knew the decree. They knew, bow down when you hear the sound of the music. Get down on your knees and pay homage to this statue. They knew what was going on, but they paid no attention to it because it had nothing to do with them. It was something that they knew that they were not going to do. They do not regard you, number one. We must not regard, we must not regard the world and its ways. And I know it's a fine line. It's a fine line between the world and what we do and what we don't do. It's a fine line. But you must be convinced by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in you will tell you what is good, what is right. What is good, what is wrong. What is right, what you shouldn't do. The Holy Spirit in you, he is He is the, quote, the meter. He lets you know whether it's right or wrong, and you must follow. You must follow what the Spirit says. They knew that it was not right for them to bow down to anything or anyone else besides the Lord. They knew that, and they had already, as Daniel set the tone earlier in, in chapter number one, they had already purposed in their heart long before, if this comes up, we will not bow down. We will not bow down. It says here, number one, they did not, they do not regard thee. Number two, they do not serve your gods. They do not serve your gods. The world has a whole set of different values. The, the world has a whole different set of gods that they have raised up. The God of this, the God of that. And we must not allow ourselves. The Bible says in 1 John that we should keep ourselves from idols. Keep ourselves. It doesn't say God keeps us from idols. He says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. That is something that we must do consciously ourselves. Keep ourselves from idols. Keep ourselves from anything that's going to pull us away from who God is. Keep ourselves from anything that's going to cause us to have a different viewpoint, a different, uh, a different point of view as to who God is. Keep yourself from idols. Nothing comes before him. Nothing and no one comes before him. Amen. It says they do not serve your gods nor worship the golden image. Once again, we do not bow down to anything or anyone other than the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who we pay homage to. Amen. But these three men, they did uh, they, they did none of those. Th these three men had made up their minds that this 
is what they were, and they were not going to bow down to what the king had decreed. Now, when you defy the enemy, when you defy the enemy, you will cause him to be enraged. You will cause the enemy to be enraged. That is def- that that is a definite thing. When you say no to what the devil wants you to do, you cause him to be angry. You cause him to be angry. And Nebuchadnezzar, he flies into a rage, a rage, and commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they brought these men before the king. He was upset, more than upset. He was on fire. He was heated. And he said, bring these three men to me. I need to see these men. Now, what was it? What was it about these men that caused them to stand up against the pressure of bowing down? What was it exactly? Okay. There were several things. There were several factors in place in within the lives of these men embedded, embedded in their souls and spirits that caused them not to flinch when threatened uh, with fire. They would not bow down. What was it about these men? Number one, they were convinced. They were convinced. They were convinced, number one, they were convinced, number one, that God would protect them. They were convinced that God would protect them. They were convinced that God was with them. They were convinced that God was with them. And three, they were convinced that God was able. God was able. They knew. They knew the God. In verse number 17, when we get to it, you'll see. They knew that God was absolutely able. So they weren't fearing anything. They weren't fearing anyone. They weren't fearing the fire. They weren't fearing the fury of the king. They weren't afraid of anything. They knew who they were, and they were going to stand no matter what. What says them verse number 14, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, is it true? Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, that you do not serve my gods nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Is it true? Is it true? Listen, listen, the world, the world is seeking to find out if who you say you are is true. And how will the know, how will the world know whether what you say you are is true by your actions. Talk, as the saying goes, talk is cheap. You can say what you want. You can say what you want to say. People want to see action. And so the world, the world is going to poke and prod and, and, and do all it can to bring to bring things out of you. Are you going to stand in the face of pressure? Are you going to stand? These men knew who God was. If you know who your God is, if you know how big your God is, that will show you just how much you will be able to stand. They did not bow down to the pressure. The world wants to know how true, how true is it? All the things that you say about your God, all you've been talking about God, how true is it? Show me something. Show me just how true it is. And when things happen, and when things go on, and when situations come, and when events arise, when circumstances uh, come to fore, what will you do? No, 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 no. Listen, listen. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. The world knows that we're not perfect, but they're looking for a crack in the armor. They're looking for some crack in the armor that they can point at you and say, see, I told you so. They're looking for that. That is why it is so important that we live the proper life before the world. We can't live a perfect life in front of the world because that's not who we are. We are not perfect people. Being Christian does not mean that we are perfect, but we must live a life that is consistent, a life that is consistent with the word of God, that is consistent with who Jesus is, consistent. That is the life that we must live before the world. They should not, and I know they do not expect us to be perfect, but we must line up with what Scripture says at all times. We must line up with what Scripture says. Verse number 15, the king continues, and the king is going to say, listen, I'm going to give you another shot. I'm going to give you another chance 
to get this right. I'm going to be patient with you. Maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you didn't understand what I asked. I'm going to give you a chance in verse number 15. Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, if you be ready now, I'm giving you a chance. He said, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. If you do this, it's all good. It's all forgiven. You're my people. I'm your God. If you bow down, I'm going to give you that shot. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall dis deliver you out of my hands? Who is that God that shall deliver you? Your God, the one that you say you serve, nobody is going to deliver you from what is going to happen to you if you don't bow down. So what do we have? We have a standoff. We have a standoff. What do you do? What do you do in the face of threats? What do you do in the face of peril? See, this is where peril meets power. Peril meets power. What do you do? Do you panic? Do you panic? Or do you trust? What do you do now? Here's what you do. You stand. You stand firm and let nothing move you. You continue to trust in your God. You continue to trust as the as these three men know knew and what we need to know as we said you need to know that he's going to protect you you need to know that he is able and you need to know that God is faithful understand those things when you're in the situation their answer these three men their answer may astound some but it says Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answer this answer to the king O Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Listen, listen. We don't need, listen, we don't need to think about this. We don't need a whole lot of time to think about this. We've already, once again, we've already purposed in our hearts what we would do if it came to this. So this is, we're not panicking. We're not worrying. We know what we're going to do. If it be so, verse number 17, our God, whom we serve, our God, the one that we serve, he says, he will, he is rather able. He is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. He is able. That's the kind of God that we serve. He has all power, all power. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. He's able to, to deliver us from the fire, and he is, and he will deliver us from you. Oh, that song is coming up. That song is coming up in my spirit. God is able. God is able to deliver from the fire. He will rescue those who serve him when the flames are burning higher. He is, he is able. He is able to deliver. But if not, you, you, those three words, listen, they know that God is able. They know that he will deliver them from the king. And then, but if he doesn't, but if he doesn't, that is, that is simply leaving yourself in the hands of a sovereign, mighty God. I am in your hands. Do with me as you please. As long as I know I'm doing your will, Lord, have your way in my life. I'm yours. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I've got, everything I, I'm yours, Lord. I'm yours. But if not, but if not, that is trust. I know he will. I know he will. But if he does it, that's not doubt. That's not doubt. That's absolute trust. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Even if he does not deliver us, even when you throw us in that fire and it starts to get hot and we start to sweat and we start to burn, we are still not going to give in. We are still going to resist. We are still going to resist. We are not going to bow down to this image because we've already purposed 
determined in our hearts that we are going to resist. We are going to resist this. This is not something that is up for debate. We don't need to talk about this anymore. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was in a rage before. Now he's full of fury. Listen, defy the enemy and you have problems when you defy the enemy. Because the enemy, uh, the enemy, listen, when you openly resist, when you openly resist or refuse to obey the enemy, it will result in enemy rage, enemy fury. You see, this was a holy resistance. They were separated. They were separated. They, 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 had, they were sanctified men. And this was a holy resistance. See, this is such thing as holy resistance. We obey because we have been separated. We don't do certain things. We don't say certain things. We don't go to certain places because we are holy. We are holy. We are sanctified. We have been set apart. We are not to be a part of this world system. We are not to be a part of it. And so we must make sure that we are always standing on the side of Scripture. Nebuchadnezzar, full of fury, and the form of his face was changed. I can see, I can see his face frowning up. He he is he is lit. He is so angry right now. He cannot believe that three Jewish men are defying his open orders, his verbal orders right to their face. They're telling him, no way. I'm not doing it. And he doesn't know what to do with himself. He is beside himself. It says here, the form of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times hotter than it was wont to be heated. Seven times hotter than the normal temperature that it would be. This was a blazing furnace that was meant to bring harm. It was meant to kill. Meant to kill. That, that was something uh, that these young men probably didn't take into consideration that the fire would be turned up. But it didn't matter. It didn't matter. They did not flinch. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I'm sure that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they they did not resist. They were resisting, uh, they were resisting to bow down to the to bow down to the image, but they not they were not resisting to be tied up. What, what, what are you gonna fight now? You, it, this, and they just allowed these men just to tie them up. And it says here that these mighty men cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats and holes and their hats and other garments. They were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. It was hot. It was heated up seven times hotter than it normally would be. And they were thrown in. Verse number 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The flame killed the men that put them in. Why would God allow his people to be put into a fire? Why does God allow us to go through fire? Why? Why? Why would God allow this? Why didn't he deliver them before it was time for them to be thrown into the fire? Why didn't God miraculously intervene in this situation, knowing what, knowing what was about to happen? You see, God does not always deliver us from the fire. Scripture says, when you go through the fire, not if, when you go through the fire, Scripture says in the book of Isaiah. And so these men, sometimes sometimes the Lord will allow us to go through the fire. Fire denoting hard times, difficult times, overwhelming times. Why does God allow this? The purpose of your fire 
is for you to draw closer to the Lord. To draw closer. That's one of the reasons why he allows you to be in the fire. Another reason why he allows you to be in the fire is to strengthen your faith. He wants to strengthen who you are. Trust me. Trust me. I know you're in a hard place. I know you're in a heated place. But trust me anyhow. Trust me anyhow. And he does it also to show you what you're made of. To show you that you can take it. You can take it. You can take the heat. You can take it. Finally, he does it to prepare us for what is ahead. He does it, he allows the fire to prepare us for what is ahead. You see, God has a will, he has a plan for every one of our lives, every single one of our lives. And the only way that you're going to get to the place where God wants you to be is not through sunshine, it's not through green grass, it's through difficult times. We find our place in God through difficulty, many times. That's how it works, that's how it works. Elevation, elevation comes through difficult circumstances. We have to remember that. We have to always remember that. And that's very important. <clears throat> that's very important. Now, it goes on that these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, verse number 23, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. They fell down. But well, here they are, tied up. Tied up, falling down in this fire, it would seem that they're about to become ashes. It is, it seems as if they're about to become uh, statistics, just a memory. It would seem, it would seem that is the case. But then Nebuchadnezzar. He was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered the king and said unto him, O oh, true, true king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men, four men, four men, loose, loose, four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Whether this was an angel, whether this was Jesus Christ, we don't know. It was Jesus Christ. It was Jesus. That's what it was right there. And here they are walking in the fire together, walking in the midst of the fire. Do you have the ability to walk in the midst of your fire? With Jesus on your side, you can walk in the midst of of your fire, that difficult time, that hard time, that that time where you, the, the time where you say, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. I don't know one thing after another is going on. And, and I just don't see any way out. Jesus is walking with you. Jesus is walking with you. And he's walking with you to show you who he is. He's walking with you to bring deliverance. He's walking with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember that. I will never leave you. What does that mean? What does that mean if it doesn't mean exactly what it says? I am not going anywhere. You are my child. I see you. I know where you are. I will not leave you. Even in your darkest times, even in the hot times, even in the lonely times, I am with you at all times. I am with you and you must trust him. Man, you must trust him. Listen, he did not deliver them from the fire. He allowed them to go in the fire, but he did deliver them in the fire. You see, that's why he let them go through the fire so that he could deliver them from the fire. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And we know that it says here in verse number 26, that Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and said, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, his, his whole attitude changed now, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come now, 
Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth from the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, captains, king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power. The fire had no power over them. Not at all. This difficult circumstance, this difficult circumstance did not change who they were. They came out the better for it. They came out absolutely the better for it. It says here, the fire had no power over them, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats a change, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. This was a miracle. A miracle. Thrown, bound, tied up in a furnace, hot furnace, and they came out just as dry, smelling like they were in sunshine. They came out fine. Why? Because God was with them. If God is with them, ladies and gentlemen, God will be with us. They were convinced who their God was. They were committed to him and they were compelled. They, they, they had no choice but not to obey. They had no choice because of who God is, because of who they were. They had to resist. And now I am sure that while they were walking through that fire, that they were rejoicing. Resist and rejoice. I am sure that there was some sort of prayer meeting going on. I am sure that they were somehow, they were praising. I am sure that there was a praise party taking place here in this fire. Nebuchadnezzar, verse 28, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. That's powerful. That is powerful. And so once again, we see that not giving in, not giving in to the pressure that the world puts on us will put us in a better position than we were at the beginning. We must not bow down to enemy pressure. We must not bow down. When you go to Daniel chapter number six, let me close with this real quick. Daniel chapter number six, we see Daniel once again in a precarious situation because, because those in authority uh, were, were hating on him. That's the word we use. Those in authority had looked at him and, and knew that he was someone to be reckoned with. And they did not like him. They did not uh, uh, appreciate uh, who he was uh, at all. And so the, the, these officials came up. They came up with a law that said that anyone, that anyone who does not pray uh, to the king uh, would receive uh, punishment. Anyone who does not uh, pray to the king. Uh, let me read it what, it's, what it says in uh, Daniel chapter number six. And let's start in verse uh, number seven. All the presidents of the kingdom and governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have counseled together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, except you, O king, he shall be cast into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish a decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. And therefore, wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. So there's a there's the decree. Now they were trying to do something that would put Daniel in peril. Okay. Verse number three. Let's go up to verse number three. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king's thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel uh, concerning the kingdom, but they could not find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful and there was and what neither was there any error or fault found in him. He was errorless. He was faultless. 
and he had an excellent spirit. This does not mean that he was sinless. Of course, he was not sinless. But once again, he was consistent. He was consistent. And that is what we must be as we walk this life, as we live this life and we live before the world. We must be consistent with scripture. We must be consistent with the God whom we serve. So it's very important that we align ourselves with what scripture says and not what the world is telling us that we should do. That is not what we must do. Once again, we must purpose in our hearts that we will do as scripture directs us at all times, at all times. And so these men were looking for an occasion. They were looking for a reason to bring this man, Daniel, down because they despised him. Listen, the world despises you if you are a Christian. If you are living this life as Jesus lived this life, if you are living this life according to the word of God and you're out there in the marketplace, you're out there in the world doing your job, the world, the world is not going to have good things to say about you. The world, if you are living for Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, they're not going to appreciate who you are. And so they... We're trying to bring him down. And verse number 10, let's go down to verse number 10. Now, when Daniel knew, Daniel knew that the writing was signed, so he was not oblivious to this. He knew what had taken place. Daniel knew that he had haters. Daniel knew that he had people in government that were against him, that they hated who he was. And it's not so much hating who he was. They hated the God that we that he served. Listen, the world at large that does not appreciate Christianity, they're not hating you. They're hating Christ. They're hating Christ. They want nothing to do with him because Christ stands against the world's standards. Christ stands against it. And that's who the world is angry with. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And it's because of Christ that the world hates true Christians. Amen. Verse number 10 again. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber. Now, what the law, what this new law signed by the king that could not be changed, this new law said that anybody who prays to any other God except the king for 30 days will be thrown into a den of lions. Any, don't pray to anyone else. What does Daniel do after knowing this? He goes home, opens up his windows, kneeled on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did before. Nothing changed. He didn't say, uh-oh, you know what? I better do this in secret. I better watch my step. I, I better do this on the down low. I better go underground and do this. And he went home and did what he did every day. Nothing changed. In the face of the pressure, in the face of the threat, in the face of the decree, he says, I'm not bowing. Once again, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, just like he did when he was younger, he had decreed, he had already purposed in his heart what he would do ahead of time. He knew that this was not something that he could bow down to. He knew that this was not something that he would agree to. And he goes home and he prays. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Gotcha. Caught you. Busted. We said, don't pray to anyone else. We got you. We got Daniel now. We got him now. Verse number 12. They came near, spoke before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man shall act the petition of any god or man within 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alters not. I cannot change it. I, I, you, The law is out there. I signed it. It's in stone. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, he's one of those Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego people. He regards thee not, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, a time before in chapter number three, they did not regard the decree of Nebuchadnezzar. This is a different king now. They did not regard uh, the, the, the ruling of Nebuchadnezzar, the decree. Paid him no mind. Here, they, Daniel does not regard thee either. Paid him no mind. Paid him no mind whatsoever. O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but makes his position three makes his petition three times a day. We said don't pray to any God 
for 30 days. And he continues to go home to his house and pray to his God three times a day. What are you going to do, king? They thought they had Daniel set now. Then the king said when he heard these words, he was displeased with himself and, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. But he couldn't change it. He had a relationship with Daniel. He had a certain rapport with Daniel. And he wanted to change what he had done. But the law stated that when the king signed a decree, that it could not be changed. He did all he could to try and change it, but he could not change it. Then these men assembled uh, unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute with the king established may be changed. They reminded him, you can't change this because he went around trying to do it. King, with all due respect, king, you can't change this law. Then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, thy God whom thou serves continually will deliver you. Now here comes, here comes faith from a man who did not know God. Here comes faith from a man who did not know God, reminding Daniel who knew God, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Your God that you serve, the one you're always talking about, the one you're always telling me about, your God, he, he, he'll he be there for you. He'll be there for you. Little did he know the truth that he was talking. This 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 pagan king, he was not a, a, a godly man, but he knew what Daniel had spoken. Once again, it's not so much about what you say. It's about what you do. Now his words will have to be put in action. You can say what you want. I will, I will, I am, I am. This is what I do. This is what I am. Stop. Good. Now, when push comes to shove, when the rubber meets the road, what will you do? When it all comes down to it, when you're in the situation, when you're in the fire, when you're in the lines, then what will you do? Cry, holler, scream, cry, help, help, help. Those are natural things to do when you're in a difficult situation. But what will you do? Will you trust? Will you trust? And it says here that Daniel and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the I'm in verse number 17, Daniel 6, 17. And the king sealed it with his own signet and the signet of his lords uh, that the purpose might be changed concerning Daniel. The king went to his palace and passed the night fasting Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. He, he, he couldn't sleep. He hated what he had to do to his friend, Daniel. He hated what he had to do. And the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a, lament, with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, a lamentable voice, meaning that he was sad when he called out to him hoping that maybe he was still alive because he knew that those lions were hungry. Daniel, Daniel, with lament, sorrow. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God, whom you serve continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? It sounds like this man, it sounds like the king, was a man of God. He was not, but it sounds as if he is. And then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Grace, grace, God's grace, his grace is able to pardon and cleanse within. God's grace was with him. He sent an angel to deliver him. Listen, don't panic. I had a shirt years ago that said, don't panic. Listen, don't panic. God will protect. Resist and rejoice. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist and once you resist, you have no choice but to give God praise. Give God praise. Then the king was exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up 
out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found on him because he believed in his God. Because he trusted, because he had faith in who God was, because he knew that God was able, because he knew that God would protect him, because he knew he was not hurt. Same story as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Different circumstances, years later, different king, but we see the same outcome. When you have faith, when you trust God, he will put your enemies down. When you resist, he will bring you to a place of rejoicing. A place of rejoicing. The king commanded that they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the lion's den their children and their wives, and the lions had mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Wow. You see, the, the lions were hungry because God had shut their mouths. The lions no doubt wanted a piece of Daniel, but their mouths were shut by the Lord. And now when these men and their families were thrown in, they feasted. They feasted. Okay. Then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. God is able. God is able. When you make your stand, when you make your stand, be prepared to face a backlash. But when you trust God, God will deliver. He will deliver. You will rise, you, you, you will rise, you will resist, but you will rejoice. Stand, stand. And having done all, stand, stand. Don't be moved. You know the old song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the waters. No, I shall not be moved. We must make sure we don't allow the enemy to move us from who we are. You might change my location, but you can't change the location of my heart. My heart is with the Lord. And that's where I will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again for giving us an opportunity to bless your name. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, your word encourages us. Lord, your word lifts us up, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you have given us this opportunity, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we know that uh, many of us find ourselves during this time in difficult straits, in many different uh, places, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you will give us the strength to carry on. I pray that you'll give us the strength to stand, even in the fire that many of us may be in the midst of. Lord, I pray that you will help us, Lord Jesus. Give us the strength to stand, even in the evil day, Lord Jesus. And having done all, Lord, help us to stand. To stand, Lord Jesus. Lord, we've studied all of these. We've studied several different individuals, these warriors. Though they did not carry any weapons, they were not soldiers in the normal sense of the word, but they were warriors because they they stood and they fought against uh, pressure and they stood against the powers that be. Lord, we pray that you will give us that same intensity, that you will give us that same fire that we might stand in the evil day, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that you will have your way in our hearts. Lord, prepare us for what is ahead, Lord Jesus. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We bless your name. We thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just thank the Lord for all that he is doing. We thank the Lord for his word. Amen. Amen. We know that the enemy wants, listen, the enemy wants, the enemy wants you to compromise. 
The enemy wants you and I to compromise. He wants he wants you to compromise morally. He wants you to compromise mentally, materially, uh, even doctrinally. He wants you to compromise your time. He he wants that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to do all of those things. But once again, we must not bow down uh, to the pressure of the enemy. The enemy says, "Listen, you worship your God, but 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 stay, but 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 stay." in the world. No, no, no. We we are in this world, but we are not of this world. While we are here, we will worship our God. We will worship our God. The enemy says, listen, you can be a Christian, but don't be so extreme. Don't be so extreme. What, what, it, it's not that serious. Yes, it is that serious. See, the enemy would say what he told Eve. Did not God say, or rather God did not really say. Yes, God says what he means, and he means what he says, and we need to follow his word at all times. Amen. The enemy says, finally, he says, listen, he says, listen, be a Christian, but don't share your faith. Be a Christian, but don't share your faith. That's something, uh, that's something that I've been hearing, uh, that I read, uh, recently, uh, um, that we should, as, as Christians, uh, well, well, some people I heard them saying of uh, the fact that they, that, that their faith was a private matter. Their faith was a private matter, and they didn't want people asking them uh, how they believe or what they believe because it's a private matter. It's not a private matter. It's not a private matter. Your faith, if it's the right faith, it's not a private matter. My faith is not a private matter. It's not private to me because it's supposed to be public because I'm supposed to tell other people who Jesus is. I'm supposed to tell other people that Jesus is my is in my life, that Christ is my life, and I want to share him with others. So my faith is not a, a personal thing, not in that sense. No, it's not personal. It's, it's public because I'm supposed to let everybody know exactly who Jesus is. Amen. And so we must make sure, once again, that we are aligned with the Lord Jesus Christ and with his word at all times. Amen. This is That's the Word Ministries. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. I want to thank you once again for being with us, for joining us on this Sunday morning. Uh, we are a ministry dedicated to the furtherance of the gospel. We preach the gospel. We teach the gospel. And we are here four days out of the week here on this first day of the week, Sunday morning at 11. We'll be here tomorrow night uh, with the Monday Night Bible Study, also known as the Line by Line Podcast. Uh, we are continuing in the book of Revelation. Tomorrow night, we begin chapter number 20, chapter number 20 tomorrow night. Amen. So we pray that you'll join us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. On Tuesday night, we are here uh, with the Bible Speaks Live, another podcast of, of Bible preaching. Uh, we are in a series entitled The Bible, or rather The Battle for Truth, Becoming a Contender of the Faith. And on Wednesday night, uh, we have our third uh, podcast, which is the Cutting It Right uh, Bible Study. Uh, we're currently in a series entitled The Power of Discernment, Understanding the Difference Between Right and Almost Right. Amen. So we pray you'll join us Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. Tuesday and Wednesday night, you can join us at 8.30 p.m. You can also go to our website at thatstheword.org. And you can also go to our YouTube channel, which is That's The Word Ministries. Amen. If you're joining us for the first time, we've also written a book entitled The Lights in the Windows, Eight Basic and Powerful Principles on Evangelism. It is available on Amazon.com. You can get the hard copy or you can download the ebook. But once again, it is available on Amazon.com. I know this book will be a blessing to your life. Amen. You can hear all of our podcasts on several podcast platforms, as we said earlier, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and CastBox Addict. Uh, you can also go to Spreaker.com, and you'll find all of our podcasts there. Uh, and uh, we pray you'll be blessed. Amen. So once again, this is me, Pastor Michael Jakes. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening over on Spreaker.com. And don't forget to join us tomorrow night for the Monday Night Bible Study, the Line by Line podcast, Book of Revelation, chapter number 20. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. May God bless you.